Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it is somewhat kind of different than usual because I'll be talking about this camera right here. It's a film camera Canon EOS one Now the camera itself is actually much older than me but you know it's still a very special camera because it is still kind of like a workhorse of a camera. It is built like a tank and it has somewhat of a basic weather ceiling to it as well and in this video I'll be talking about the operational side of things, the image quality and what I think about this camera and yeah without further ado let's get into the video. So the Canon EOS One. now this camera is the film camera and it is kind of different than what I usually talk about, which is like film cameras as well, but they're kind of more classic like the Mamiya 645 or the Nikon EM or the Canon AE-1, you get the idea. But this is somewhat kind of a workhorse of a uh, film camera that obviously the design is very different, the operational side of things is very different as well and you know there's some sort of charm to using this camera as well. It might not be a kind of the charm as if you were to use like let's say the Canon AE-1 or the Nikon EM or the Hasselblad or the Voglander or what have you but it is still a film camera and there is a certain charm to using this camera but there's also a practicality benefit to using it as well and this video is actually more of a my thought video rather than like a review video so just keep that in mind in case you're actually looking to getting this camera or just looking for like a second or a third opinion about this camera and just as mentioned earlier I'll be diving into the operational side of things the ergonomics and then I'll be talking about the image quality although there's not that much to talk about because it's also technically determined by the film itself but you know being an EF mount camera there is still something to talk about and then I'll be diving into the conclusion which is why I still recommend this camera what I still think about this camera and overall why it is still a good camera in my opinion. So yeah, let's first start with the operational side of things, the ergonomics and everything. Well, this camera is very different from the other cheap film cameras that, let's say, what you get with the uh, EOS 500 or the EOS 1000 or what have you. This is a camera that I kind of upgraded from, well, this is the upgraded camera and this is the camera that I decided like okay I should upgrade from this which is the EOS 500. It was a very reliable camera but you know with these cheap cameras that you can get between like 1-2 euros or even like 15 euros depending on like where you buy it from and whom you bought it from. So yeah even though it's great it's really a nice stepping stone into you know shooting with film and it's also kind of like very cheap and affordable that still allows you to actually use full manual control or even start with like basic auto controls if you want to start with the super basics but with this kind of camera a lot of things are actually built to last so with that camera if you're actually doing something like um, using it as a workhorse which I did use it as a workhorse the shutter became really unreliable and after a while of using it you might actually find that after each shot you might find a bit of the shutter curtain in the actual frame so the entire frame wasn't really shot properly when the film rewind itself so you get a bit of a crop from it as well so it can be kind of annoying and also like with i'm not even talking about one camera because you know, I, I sometimes use these cameras to do photo shoots and also in some of my photo shoots video you will see these cameras as well. And when you do put it through its paces and really work hard with them, you will find that some of them do give light leaks as well. So yeah, just to watch out. And where this camera comes in is, as I mentioned earlier, it is kind of a workhorse. All the things are really nicely sealed even today. And talking about sealing, there is basic weather sealing into this camera. And even though it's not as rugged or as strong as let's say the uh, Canon EOS 1V or the Canon EOS 1N, but this camera still has a very nice and basic weather sealing to it and I have taken it through some rough weather before and it actually proved to survive no dust sand or even moisture building inside so that's actually quite nice and yeah it's just pretty much a testament through time as well on like um, you know whether these ports are actually open and no rubber gaskets around these areas but 
it still works and everything still functions as it did when it was still brand new, albeit with a bit of scratches all around the body, of course, because I got this camera secondhand and I guess whoever used it before me or before the previous owner, even because this camera is actually pretty old, must have put it through quite a few um, environments, judging from these scratches and everything. And talking about build quality, this camera is indeed plastic. I believe it's polycarbonate. And even though it's not magnesium alloy, like let's say the more modern 1D Xs or even back to the 1D line of cameras, but it is still kind of like a tough plastic. And that is pretty much proven by all the scratches and pretty much uh, drop scratches as well like you actually know that some of these scratches were actually made from dropping rather than just scratching around so yeah it's it's really a testament through time as well um the grip over here does feel very plasticky because it is a flap to all these functions and settings up here as well. So yeah, that's pretty much the only plasticky feeling about this uh, part of the camera, but also if you want to change the battery, which this camera does take a really nice uh, long lasting battery, you have to unscrew this back part here. And then here's the very smart part, rather than letting this fall down, after, after unscrewing it, you actually have to pull it. So this lock right here is actually kind of a lock that's keeping it in place and you'll find that you'll have to insert one to CR5 battery and the way to actually take it out is actually just kind of like pull out this gray circular thing and then you have it. So this is actually quite a nice uh, thick battery here. And uh, yeah, so far it's been lasting for about a year now without, you know, uh, that much trouble. But maybe it's also just the branding, I'm not sure. But at least with this brand and also with this battery, I've been using it for pretty much about a year now. And it's been through quite a lot of environment and it's still lasting. And uh, yeah, the next point is actually loading the film. It's actually quite safe and also quite easy. So you actually have to press this button and pull this lever down and then this pops up and by popping the back cover you will actually be able to put your film in here and if you slide your negative through here just where this orange line is and close the camera you will be able to just yeah uh, leave it like that until you turn on your camera and once you turn on the camera the camera will actually start reloading the film and then putting it to shot number one right away automatically and also quite fast. So you don't need to, you know, worry about putting it through a certain slot and then winding it yourself. This is all automatic and also quite fast and reliable. And that's pretty much the theme of this operational side of this camera, pretty much. This camera is very reliable. So whether if you wanna focus or whether if you wanna press the shutter, there's no second thought behind it. You just actually point and focus and shoot. It's very reliable because with some film cameras, there's some certain shutter delay or shutter lag behind it. and you know, you could actually miss the shot. Though, keep in mind, even though this autofocusing system is actually quite accurate, there's only one point in there, and that's the center one. And even though it's accurate, but if you're actually shooting against the sunlight, it can prove to actually mess the autofocusing system up a little bit. So if you're shooting all the other normal scenes or normal indoor lighting scenes as well, which will work, it will work normally and accurately as well. But if you just introduce some sort of like really strong light source into the image, or especially if you're shooting against the sunlight, like what I usually shoot with, then it can actually be a problem to this camera camera and you can actually or you might actually be better off just manual focusing it and talking about manual focusing this camera actually has really big viewfinder through the back and it's also 100% coverage which is good because this actually allows you to really precisely uh, manual focus and also quickly manual focus your shots quite easily because you know this is a really bright and big viewfinder so compare that to something like uh, this camera where the viewfinder is not even 100% and it's somewhat of a darker viewfinder as well then you know it's going to be harder to manually focus on those cameras but with this camera it's so much easier to actually manual focus as well that being said when this camera actually confirms the focus of course if you have the beep on it will actually confirm with a beep but since i don't have the beep on um <laughs> 
there's only visual confirmation and when you're working a lot against the sunlight or against any strong light source uh, in front of the camera it's also hard to see if it's really tack in focus so one thing that you might not be used to is the actual autofocusing point doesn't illuminate once you're actually in focus. So just keep that in mind. You just need a bit of time to get used to it because more modern cameras, there is some sort of a limit, like illumination um, occurring in the viewfinder, whether it's from the AF points or the AF confirmation or some sort of, let's say, um, signs or symbols that allows you to actually know that it's actually in focus but this camera it doesn't tell you anything regarding the focus in the viewfinder itself so if it looks focused to you then it's probably in focus to the best point that the camera can pull focus on so yeah just keep that in mind and then one last point about the viewfinder is actually the diopter so just looking at with the eyepiece here it doesn't seem like there's any diopter but actually if you want to adjust the diopter you just have to pull this up and you can adjust the diopter just from here so yeah unlike modern cameras from Canon where you see the diopter right next to the viewfinder uh, like this R5 there's just this one right here on the side and um, yeah, it just makes it easier to uh, both knock the diopter, but also just easier to adjust in general. Whereas this one, you just kind of have to really lift it up and adjust it yourself. The positive part is, well, you are always really sure that it's always going to be on the point because it's hard to kind of knock it to a different position. So, yeah. And uh, otherwise, the button layouts, everything on here, I find it quite actually logically arranged. And when you press on all of these buttons, even if you have gloves on, you actually feel the confirmation and everything is very tactile. And yeah, it's very nice to operate. It's not too harsh, but it's also giving you that nice confirmation that you actually press on those buttons. So yeah, otherwise, there's not really much to complain about. This camera accepts the EF mount which i mentioned earlier and that's actually quite nice because you can still actually mount the more modern glass on here like even the 85 1.2 mark ii you can really mount this on this camera and it will be quite nicely balanced as well because this is kind of heavy well not too heavy but just heavy enough that you know if you mount like the 70 to 200 f 2.8 on here it would still be balanced so yeah it's very sturdy, it's very solidly made, and it's also heavy enough to balance off any heavy lenses that you would use with this camera. And um, with this camera, like this kind of older, cheaper cameras from Canon, even though it takes EF mount, but a lot of them have plastic mount. This has metal, so here's another positive point. But it's also quite light. It's good for portable reasons, but it's also not really how you say like not really balanced when you want to mount uh let's say heavier lenses on here which can be a problem and if you shoot a lot of portraits like i do i really love using the 85 1.2 and the 50 1.4 while the 50 is actually not heavy by any means but something like this it's good to have a camera that is actually balanced because it actually helps with you to be balanced for the shot especially if you use shallow depth of field like f1.4 f1.2 being very stable and staying still is very crucial because just a millimeter off or just a few millimeter off your shots will just look a bit out of focus or soft in general so yeah it's good to have a very sturdy and a weighty camera as well. Now this camera actually shoot at around 2.5 frames per second. Now it doesn't sound a lot but if you do have a booster pack on here you can actually boost it up to 5.5 frames per second and if you're doing a lot of action I think you know you'll find it useful. That being said I don't think the auto focusing system will be able to kind of keep up to that 5.5 frames per second to make sure that all of the shots are in focus but it's there when you need it and if you have the extra booster for it then of course feel free to actually go with that but I think for most kind of photography for what I do it's best to just keep it at one frames per second or just a single shot and uh, just make sure everything is in focus and then shoot so yeah it's not the fastest camera in the world but it will get the job done and it's definitely much more reliable accurate and faster than again these <laughs> cheap cameras i keep on coming back to them but they are really useful tool they're really great they also take good images but it's just functionally 
you know, you have a much more reliable camera. And the reason I'm actually bringing, you know, the comparison up quite a bit is also because the price tag. The price tag on this camera, yes, it's about 100 euros where I live in, the, in this region. Can be a bit more sometimes. But if you go to like normal secondhand places, uh, you can actually find them for really low amount of money. So I got mine for around 17 euros with actually a film inside and also a battery and everything. And even though it's not in the best condition, there are a lot of scratches and uh, flaps missing, like the cover of these ports missing, I still find it like pretty much a good deal because, you know, 17 euros, you're hitting to the territory of uh, these cheap cameras anyway, these cheap plastic ones. So yeah, if you do find this camera at a low price than usual, then yeah, just go for it because it's really worth it in my opinion. Of course, assuming you really like the camera, you really want to get into film photography and or even if you just want to dip your toes into film photography, I think that it is still a great reliable camera. And if you don't want to like fiddle with, you know, manually winding the film, this camera actually does it automatically. So, you know, it kind of like cuts away the hustle or like that trouble of maybe risking pulling out a lot of film than you unexpectedly would want to. And while we're actually on the topic of frames per second, I would just like to briefly touch upon the shutter speed. The shutter speed of this camera actually goes up all the way to 8,000th of a second, which is something I really love because again, if you're like shooting portraits like me, then you're gonna be shooting a lot with f1.2, f1.4, even f1.8. And having 8,000th of a second shutter speed is something that's really, really useful in this kind of camera because usually with cheap film cameras they usually go between one thousandth of a second to two two thousandth of a second or even like maxing out at four four thousandth of a second which is still far behind the eight thousandth of a second of this camera so yeah having the eight thousandth of a second is really useful and yeah that's pretty much it about the operational side of things the ergonomics of this camera and yeah the usability side of things and now into the image quality well the image quality there's not that much to really talk about it really de mainly depends on the film you put inside and also the lenses and of course as mentioned earlier this camera is accepts the EF lens mount and you can really experiment a lot with the EF lens mount not to mention that you still can find FD to EF adapters so making this camera able to accept a lot of different film uh, lenses era as well as well as many modern EF lenses as well so you can actually experiment many many different kind of perspective many many different kinds of uh, image quality and image look to your images as well so yeah the image quality out of this camera is actually really good considering that there's definitely no light leak everything is just straight onto the film itself and yeah, I would just like to recommend this camera over still over those cheap, fantastic, but cheap cameras as well, because yeah, it really ensures that there's no light leak. It really ensures that a lot of the system in here gets uh, run smoothly and it doesn't affect the actual image quality on the film like some of the plastic fantastic cameras do and even if you go for something even a bit more expensive like the Nikon EM right here um, this will still be much more reliable in terms of giving you nicer image quality than this camera can because sometimes you will run into issues of certain light leaks or certain sort of like grain to it with that I cannot really explain but if you shoot film a lot you might be able to understand what I mean by that but yeah um, there's not really much complaint to it it doesn't give any weird vignetting as some film cameras might as they age so yeah there is that and now into pretty much my conclusion well um, if you've made it this far congratulations and thank you very much and overall I still think that this camera is a nice camera to actually take with you or even experiment on or even have it as the main film camera if you shoot 35 millimeter format. Of course this camera is not everyone's cup of tea because a lot of people might actually prefer the more stylish looking of film cameras that's why they might want to get into a film camera because of the aesthetics of the cameras, the lenses and everything but if you really just want to shoot film and don't really care about how the camera looks 
I would still recommend this camera because it's reliable, it produces good images. If you want to take it through harsh environments, this camera will actually go with you to a certain extent. And yeah, I've shot with this camera through light rain, through different, actually different kind of rainy conditions and through cold and heat wave before. And to be honest, it does perform as reliably as it did when it first came out. Well even though I never really held a brand new version of this camera, but you know, having nothing failing on me, I would still be able to assume and guarantee that it does still perform as it first came out. So yeah, and also there are not a lot of complications to this camera, so it does allow you to actually focus on getting your shots. And this camera working reliably, it really ensures you actually getting the shots more than the camera that you have to kind of fiddle everything through. There's fun in that as well and there's obviously craftsmanship in that as well but there's also fun in you know just capturing that moment, capturing the right shot and knowing that the camera will act really reliably. Let me see if I can actually show you the uh, shutter sound without the film inside. It should. Yeah that's how it sounds like. And to change into continuous shooting, you just have to open this flap. It's very interesting. And press the blue button where it says drive, and then you can just uh, adjust the dial, and here is the sound of it. So that was about 2.5 frames per second, so it actually doesn't sound that slow because there's the flap and there's also the, uh, the, the film winder actually moving itself as well. So yeah, it's actually quite nice sounding and also it's really fun to play with. But of course, with this kind of older cameras, if something is broken, Canon doesn't really service this camera anymore and well, at least according to the Canon website here in my region, but you know, like you will be probably able to find some other spare parts on the internet, but maybe it's still better to buy a new one if something's broken because it's still hard to really dig in such an old camera and try to find and fix certain things. It's, it's a complicated process in a different way and if it breaks, it really breaks, so that's the downside. But yeah, otherwise it's a very nice, very tough, very durable camera to use. It's also a very fun camera to actually use as well because it goes wherever you actually take it to and it performs really reliably. I know I've been overselling on this camera and also have been using the word reliable too many times, but it is such a reliable camera to use. And I think that it would really last for many more years to come for sure. And as long as you can actually find the battery for it in your region, because I know that in some region, this battery can be a bit difficult to find, but if you can find batteries for it, yeah, it lasts for a very long time. And also it's a nice camera to also kind of get experimental with because obviously there's so many films out there that you might not even heard of and if you're getting into film photography there will be certain films like that are very unique that you can't really get with digital and or even manipulate with digital to get that kind of look so you can definitely manipulate a lot of things with those kind of film as well and also just experiment with this camera and yeah. But of course, when it comes to film rolls, you can also experiment with other film cameras as well. But I'm just saying that this camera is also just a very nice, reliable camera to actually get experimental with as well. But otherwise, yeah, that's been it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you need a free photography guidebook, it's absolutely for free on my website. The link is down in the description section below. It's absolutely for free. I will not bombard you with any news latter nonsense. So just feel free to just click and download. Otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. This far and uh, stay safe, have fun shooting, till next time, bye for now.